to be given the same play as McGovern himself. Now, I don't, I don't know if any panelist wants to respond on to that question. That is the question of how the election was covered. I think what we what we, we can probably respond to is, uh, is this the kind of thing that a press council would deal with? Uh, and I, I think that uh, uh, that would be a difficult thing to deal with, but from um, uh, Jim Borman's answer, this would be the kind of thing that, uh, that uh, a council would struggle with. Uh, Herb, what do you think? an adverse answer, I, I'd like to respond, going back a bit, to that question about the press the media being intimidated by Agnew. I don't think that's true at all. And I think it's not worth further discussion. Uh, yeah, there, there might be some individual little papers or editors someplace that, that are, were intimidated by Agnew or radio or broadcasting, but any newspaper that's worth a damn, and most of them are, are not intimidated by something like that. But the reason I wanted to mention this point is that is one of the arguments brought out against the press council, the fear that uh, it, it would uh, lead newspapers to be more cautious, to be intimidated, to be unwilling to uh, pursue the news to the utmost of their ability. Well, I don't believe that's true either of good newspapers. Now, the reason I want to bring these points out is at the end of this session, I'm going to put some ballots around and ask you to express your opinion on whether you favor three different kinds of press councils. This, this is a meaningless ballot by Gallup or any other standard, but it, on, on the three things, on the National Press Council and on the State Press Council and on the, lo the uh, local press councils. Now, um, I'm sorry I interrupted uh, your well-planned program here, but I, maybe uh, people can be thinking about this point of what, whether they do or don't favor, and some of the questions might be uh, uh, devoted to that point before with this recess. Okay, Gord. I think that the uh, input is probably as valuable as regulation in certain areas of industry, and newspapers are in fact an industry. Uh, it's getting the idea or the complaint or the gripe before the public and before the, the eye of those people who make the decisions that create the gripe in the first place. I think over the long haul that will have a, an effect and will create change. I, for example, I think the, the coverage of the McGovern campaign uh, probably was in fact unfair, but some of the complaints that like was issue, uh, brought about just now, I think dealt with when you put a story by Mc, of McGovern against a, a surrogate of Nixon on equal stature. Well, the problem is, is that, you know, what are we talking about? What, what was said in the story or how it was played? And I don't know how you're ever gonna regulate how newspapers play things because, you know, like the, the register has the banner headline every day and some papers have no headline hardly at all. Just, it's so difficult to, to, to try to <coughs> regulate those kinds of uh, decisions. But I think the input 
in those areas and in, in, in areas of coverage and access generally I think can be very valuable and that's I think that's where the, the council can serve as the, <coughs> the, the at least a channel to make sure that those things come from the public to the, uh, the press. I think you have to realize that, that the press council is only one vehicle in this whole thing and it, its success certainly isn't assured and it's not assured in Iowa Falls and we're, we're constantly looking for new ideas and ways to Im improve what we're doing. But um, I'm not going to deny to anybody that uh, I'm going to be unhappy if the people of Iowa Falls have more trust and confidence in the Iowa Falls newspaper and I end up making a little bit more money as a result of it. Uh, somebody said it was an industry and of course it is. But I, I really think it's, this isn't the answer for all newspapers and it isn't an answer for all the complaints about press fairness. And uh, what's, what's right for my community in Iowa Falls isn't necessarily right for Eldora or Marshalltown. But it, it's simply, it's simply a one attempt. And I think the Christian Science Monitor addressing itself to the National Press Council trying to be established by the 20th Century Fund said the other day that it's the responsibility of both the public and the press to protect the constitutional rights of free press, but it's the responsibility of the press itself to see that it is fair and it maintains its public confidence and respect. We're in the back room. I think Jim and Chuck, you both have had more experience with the press That's council all than the rest of us, so yeah. although yeah. you're answering a lot of questions, would you feel this one too? I'm not sure. <laughs> you're saying, is the press council going to assure that we don't express ourselves editorially on the, in the newspaper? My next question yeah. was, how do you draw the distinction between the newspaper's right to express its opinion on its editorial page and its function in presenting the news elsewhere? Uh, is that right? Well, I don't, my feeling we have both rights, and I don't think you can divorce them. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. The press council is never going to tell me uh, what to do editorially. And they, they may get on my back about something, and they say, you had the facts wrong. And if they can show me I did, why, well, okay, I've, I've got egg on my face, and I'll own up to it. Uh, if I might just interject here, somewhere in the 20th Century Fund's proposition for a National Press Council, I believe it specifically sets out that editorial page commentary is not uh, subject to a press council deliberation, that that is in fact free speech and over and above anything that a press council might deliberate on. Uh, Jim, you one probably one. know more. Uh, I just want to clarify one more thing here, too. That uh, In Iowa Falls, our situation is, would be different than a, than a statewide press council, such as Jim's talking about in, in Minnesota. Um, it's a two-way street with us. We have people on there, and we're hoping they're going to be replaced with people who, who will go back to their own circle of friends and talk about some of the things. We're, we hope that it will promote some greater understanding of what we're doing. And you'd be surprised when you get a group of 12 people in the room and they start asking questions about various policies. <coughs> and you give them a chance to understand them and really go into them in some depth. Um, they do understand them. And it's, it's a two-way street. It's a, it's a pipeline which goes both ways with us. Now, I can't tell you about the other. Not for exp uh, uh, exp not for advocating any particular union views, however. Uh, this was a news report uh, that uh, there had been some wrongdoing by 
uh, a legislator which might possibly have resulted in a conflict of interest. And uh, the editor simply was wrong on his facts about what had actually happened. And the legislator said this was an unfair uh, treatment of uh, him, and he brought the charges. Uh, they were investigated, and uh, it was true that the facts were wrong and that the legislator had been unfairly treated, and it didn't have anything to do with union bias uh, one way or the other. It was simply a matter of, of uh, being fair. But uh, 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 Wendell has just shown me here the uh, uh, reference in the proposed uh, uh, what, uh, the Constitution, perhaps, of the 20th Century Funds uh, uh, Council? It's, it suggests the Council shall limit its review to news reporting. Specifically identified editorial comment is excluded. Uh, we have no such exclusion in our Constitution. Uh, we include uh, unfairness in whatever form it may be. If a person uh, comes to us with a complaint that uh, there's been an editorial campaign on the editorial page which has unfairly uh, set forth the complainant's position and he wants to get that righted, uh, we would certainly consider his complaint. We wouldn't necessarily censure the, the editor if he was fully within his rights in what he was doing, but if he, he was simply being dishonest, we might say so if we could uh, establish that. Uh, I might add that in addition to uh, uh, considering news and uh, editorial comment uh, or content, we also have uh, the first amendment that we made to our Constitution was to include advertising as well. Okay, uh, one more question, then I think we'll take a, a, a short break in place, a stretch and what have you, then we'll come back and deal with uh, uh, the question of the shield law. I think your hand was up first. Um, let me first of all say that our, our experiment with, uh, with the high school student hasn't been altogether satisfactory. Uh, we didn't select him, the journalism teacher did, and it, it hasn't worked too well. Um, the other problem, and we've thought about the college student, uh, in a community college you have a, a very transient group. There's a lot of, there are a lot of commuters. Um, and and I can't give you a satisfactory answer, I'm afraid, but the, the, activi the activists, there are just not many of them, there's just not that much interest, really, um, among, the, uh, among our college student population, and, and it's not right, I'm not very happy about it, and we wouldn't be adverse to having um, a college student on it. Uh, Let's uh, stretch, take five minutes, and then we'll come back here from the right side. <laughs> this been the wrong side? <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to left? As opposed to right? <laughs> 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 the left side or right? <laughs> 